And this is a good chart because it's kind of what I saw in the day before. I just want to walk it through it. And, it, and let, let, when you're looking at this, don't, don't approach this from the standpoint of, oh my God, I've got to memorize this chart. Approach this from the standpoint of, does this chart make sense given the chemistry of the, the, the substance we're looking at? So peptide hormones here, you mentioned, were hydrophilic, right? Steroid hormones here, we mentioned, were hydrophobic. Okay. For the most part, we've got two different categories of hormones derived from amino acids. Those that are produced by the thyroid in this other category, they're called catecholamines. Catecholamines are like the dopamine you have in everything. Thyroid hormones are abbreviated of T3 and T4. They really affect metabolism. Like overall, set your overall metabolic rate. These are mostly hydrophobic because of their chemistry. These are mostly hydrophilic because of their chemistry. So this category right here should look similar to this one. Okay. Again, just based on their chemistry. And this one should look similar to this one. So let's look at the two broad categories here, and then we'll just see that those fall into, more or less fall into one or the other. Synthesis and storage. Peptide hormones, you can synthesize them early and often and store them, right? Because they'll stay in a vesicle. So a cell, an endocrine gland, or a cell structure can store these up in large amounts and release them when they need to. This one, on the other hand, you often can't store them, so you have to just make them and release them when you need them. Uh, so because of that, again, it's like a slow-on response, a slow-off response because of their chemistry. How do you release these? Since these are stored in a vesicle, the way is by something called vesicular transport or bulk transport, exocytosis. The vesicle fuses to the cell membrane, it opens up, and you release the compound. This one, on the other hand, because we don't store it, as soon as it's made in usually the smooth ER, as soon as it's made in the smooth ER, it just diffuses right out because it's going from a high concentration in the smooth ER where it's being made to a low concentration outside in the, the extracellular fluid. So it just simple diffusion. How do you transport it? Well, we're both going to be in blood plasma, right? Because it's a hormone. So it's got to be in blood plasma. Here, because of its chemistry, hydrophilic, it's soluble. So because it's soluble in water, it just dissolves. Just like sugar in water dissolves. You okay, Jeremiah? A little shaky there? Got the shakes? <laughs> yeah, okay. 